right, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Um, today is the 11th day of December, and we have gathered here to address the nation and the world over regarding we as uh, librarians under the banner of Council of Petra, we are here to address the librarian people in the world over on our stand, on our uh, proposed uh, campaign to uh, put the government feet on fire to meet up with the obligations of the librarian people. Uh, in attendance here representing the Council of Patriots is uh, Honorable Yaka Kolova, uh, Mr. Vitor Silly, Re Right Reverend Vitor Silly, <laughs> um, Mr. Mohammed Ali, and uh, Dr. Jeremiah Wapo in attendance to uh, represent the Council of Patriots. So at this point in time, we will turn the um, Mark over to uh, our acting chairman, uh, Mr. Mohamed Ali, to uh, read our position statement. Thank you, Dr. Wapo. And fellow Liberians, members of, of the press, good afternoon. Before we begin this press statement, we'd like to take this time on behalf of the Council of Patriots to extend our deepest condolences to the Bromskin family and the Liberty Party for the passing of Councillor Charles Walker Bromskin. Let us all observe a moment of silence for a very great and patriotic Liberian. Liberian. Thank you. In keeping with law, the Council of Patriot communicated with the government of Liberia through the Ministry of Justice on November 11, 2019 informing the state of our intent to hold a peaceful assembly in Morovia beginning December 30, 2019, that will potentially last for several days. We therefore requested the government, in keeping with law, to provide security for the thousands of Liberians who will be gathering peacefully to express their unaddressed grievances to their government. On December 2, 2019, the Ministry of Justice communicated with the COP in a three-page letter addressed to Mr. Muhammad Ali, Acting Chairman of the COP, categorically stating that the government of Liberia will renege on its constitutional duty of providing security for its citizens who will be gathering in a peaceful manner to express their grievances. Not only that the government stated that it will renege on its constitutional obligations, but it threatened to arrest and falsely charge organizers of the December 30 assembly with the high crime of treason. In view of this, we are gathered here today to inform the Liberian people and the world our response to the government. First of all, we want to highlight and point out the deliberate misrepresentation of facts contained in the letter sent to the COP from the MOJ and address the substantive issues that form the basis for the planned December 30, 2019 Mass Citizen Peaceful Assembly. We want to avert the attention of the Ministry of Justice to our communication of November 11, 2019 in which we informed the government through the MOJ of a planned mass action peaceful citizen assembly scheduled to begin in the morning hours of Monday, December 30, 2019, and possibly beyond, and requested that the government of Liberia provide security for the assembly, as was done six months earlier on June 7, 2019. It is strike law that when people feel aggrieved, when citizens have legitimate grievances, they do have the constitutional protected right to assemble peacefully to hold their government to account. The government in their response cited a number of constitutional provisions accusing the COP of conduct which in their skewed interpretation amounts to treason levying war against the state, subversion, abrogating or attempting to overthrow the government, etc. However, what we found disconcerting is that the government has deliberately and conveniently ignored 
other specific provisions of the 1986 Constitution which guarantee the people's legitimate right to vent their concerns and call on their government to address issues that directly impact their lives negatively. The COP wants to let the government understand that there is absolutely nothing treasonous in citizens gathering in a peaceful manner to interact with various functionaries of their government. We therefore call on the government of Liberia through the Ministry of Justice to retract such threats and false allegations against peaceful Liberians. Additionally, we want the Liberian people to know that there is absolutely nowhere in our communication to the government where we mention that we are embarking on the turn or campaign to ask the president of Liberia to step down or resign. But even if we did, we still will not be in, the, in, the, in violation of the laws as there is no law that forbids any citizen from asking public servants, including the president of Liberia, to resign for a just cause. The government's response was simply based on rumors, gossips, and as they claim what they, the government, and their agents heard people in their individual capacities stated either on radio or that expressed on social media. We like to remind the government that the Liberian Constitution of 1986 remains validly operative and applicable in the instant case. Moreover, to say that Liberians assemble peaceably to ask their government to address the worsening economic situation across the country, theft of public resources, runaway greed and unchecked corruption in public service, collapsed health system, several months of unpaid salaries and a lawful reduction in civil servant salary under the guise of quote-unquote harmonization, etc., is tantamount to treason subversion and levying war against the state is not only preposterous and ludicrous but also amounts to demonstrated act on the part of the government of liberia to deny its citizens to exercise their rights as enshrined in articles 1 and 17 of the 1986 constitution this act in and of itself on the part of the government is an attempt to subvert the constitution and will reject this outright this egregious effort on the part of elements at the Justice Ministry to mislead the President and to reduce Liberia to a banana republic will be resisted by all Liberians of good conscience. Under our constitutional democratic system of government, it is not an aberration for citizens to plead with the President and other functionaries of government to engineer a paradigm shift in governance that guarantees economic survival for all Liberians. We want to state emphatically that we will not be coerced, intimidated, or manipulated to, re to disengage from our democratic quest. The Liberian people have a collective responsibility to hold leadership accountable by asking the right questions and demanding the right answers, which we intend to do on December 30, 2019, in a responsibly peaceful and organized fashion. Fellow Liberians, a society where free speech or dissent is frowned upon and su suppressed cannot grow, a society which, in which leadership cannot be held to account, a society in which citizens are denied the right to freely assemble and express themselves will eventually slip into dictatorship. Nowhere is this more marked than in Liberia. We take anything, except anything, except the worst abuses and hardly wing at some of the worst absurdities. People have their right trampled on without challenging or taking any action. We cannot sit idly by and watch Liberia continue to suffer such indignities. In order to regain the consciousness of society, we are calling on Liberians from all walks of life to assemble in a very peaceable manner on December 30, 2019 to call on our government to address the very pertinent issues enshrined in the June 7 petition. As you are aware, the government has completely ignored the June 7 petition as though the tens of thousands of Liberians who express their grievances in self-petition do not matter. 
last day we want to use this from the government of liberia that the tens of thousands of liberians that tens of thousands of Liberians will be gathering on december 30 2019 at the seat of government on capitol hill to demand the total implementation of all the camps stated in the june 7 petition and other grievances including the payments of salaries and the reversal of the so-called harmonization accordingly we call on the government to provide the necessary and requisite security protection for those citizens of liberia that will be gathering in keeping with law may god bless us all and save the state thank you all right ladies and gentlemen of the press um thank you very much for coming at this point in time we're taking the five questions and from from page right all right, uh, my name is Obidaya Johnson. I come from Frontbridge, Africa. Mr. Ali, there has been persistent calls from Liberians, uh, particularly the Interreligious Council of Liberia, for the COP to abort its planned protest on December 30th on grounds that it is not in the interest of the country. Can you speak to this? That's number one. Number two has to do with there has been this purported. Uh, report on the social media, particularly Facebook, uh, insinuating that uh, you and your funder in person of Heron Costa allegedly requested the government to give you 70,000 United States dollars to lay down or play low on this We Are Step Down campaign. What's your reaction? Um, let me say firstly that other colleagues here will also answer to some questions that I can answer to directly. To your second question, I am not in the business of responding to trash in gibberish. So that's just total trash. On the first question, we respect the Council of Patriots, and, I mean, the Council, the Interreligious Council a lot and its members. But we call on them to ask the government to stop stealing our resources for their personal benefit, to begin to investigate the acquisition of private properties. And what we are more disappointed in is the fact that this interreligious council that we so respect has never called on the government to look into the petition that was submitted by thousands of Liberians to the government of Liberia. We do not think that the interreligious council should only be functional when a group of citizens in a peaceful manner want to assemble to address, to ask their government to address grievances. We are asking the interreligious council to in fact join us on December 30 for every one of us in a very peaceful manner to ask our government to address the worsening economic situation the runaway greed that we talked about, the unpaid civil servant salaries, and the, 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 the many other wrongs that the government is doing. We think that is the right way for the Interreligious Council to proceed. Um, gentlemen, with black t-shirt there. All right, thank you. My name is Emmanuel Mopul, and I report for Sky TV. So as I stand now, what is the nomenclature of the peaceful assembly for now? You just said a peaceful assembly. We are assembling to ask our government to implement the petition we submit, the counts in the petition we submitted on June 7. And we will not leave the street. Let me make this very clear until the government can begin acting on that. There are things in our petition that can be acted upon with a clip of the finger. For example, we talked about the prosecution of those that squandered the U.S. $25 million that was meant to mop up ex excess Liberian dollars from the economy. The issue of the $16 billion still lingers on. We ask the government to trash away the CTNG on continuous that is increasing the hardship on our people. As you will notice, if you go on the market, prices are increasing consistently. These are things that you can add on. Fire Samuel 12. For stealing 25 million, sack Nathaniel McGill for involved into this entire corruption scandal with, with the, the National Housing and Saving Bank. There are lots of things the president can do. Tell us how you're going to, what are the plans you have in place to resuscitate the economy? Are those difficult things for the president to do? 
revise the entire harmonization thing because you are unlawfully reducing civil service salary. When you read the civil service standing order, salaries cannot be adjusted downward. They can only be carried, adjusted upward. Are those difficult things? Pay the civil servants for the months you owe them. They are not difficult to do. Thank you. And uh, we'll take a question from here. Yeah, um, thank you. I'm Dave Cooper, I write for Inquiry newspaper. Uh, Mr. Adi, I'm still a little bit confused. I want you to clear this up. In your expose, you said that a protest is not for President We are to step down or a peaceful assemble. But recently, Honorable Yaga Koduba on a team at 50 50 talk show, he said that the protest is for the President to go. And uh, the chairman in person of uh, Heron Costa, he reiterated it that the protest is for the President to go. And as I'm looking, uh, there's a guy holding a uh, placard and he's saying that George Ryan must go. You clearly uh, reconcile that for me, please. Let me say this. First, again, we stated here the official position of the Council of Patriots. However, independent citizens have got the right, they have got the right to ask our president to resign. They are violating no law. Honorable Yeke Koloba can go on the radio and say, President, we are to resign. It's left with President, we are to say, I will resign or I will not resign. So, the official thing you should go by is the communication that the Council of Patriots sent to the Ministry of Justice. These people behind here, they have their rights. That's a form of protest. You can hold your placard before the executive mansion and say, President, we are stepped down. It happens everywhere in the world. So that is no wrong, and we will not trample on their right to express themselves. Yeah, uh, Mr. Okay, uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, we'll take a question from here now. Uh, good afternoon. My name is James Flamo. I report for Spoon FM and Spoon TV. I... I, w I, I want the Council of Patriot to reconcile this statement. The first protest you had, I was a part of that. And the press conference you had right after the press, uh, right after that protest, you said your next action was going to be to ask the president to leave. That that, that was your next target. You 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 told the word that your next protest that will be coming up if the president refused to uh, address your petition, it means he will be asked to leave. And you came out with that. Uh, press statement since then today you are here again contradicting your very statement that you made right after your protest and next do you do you know the outcome of uh, this protest you are about to take because you're talking about this meaning you're not just going to protest for one or two days you're going to be there for weeks do you know the economic impact or what the country is doing to benefit as a result of this wonderful protest you're talking about? We are already in, in one of the worst economic situations in this country. Uh, it can only get worse. You have a bunch of inept and unqualified people heading the economic management team of this country. It's not going to get any better unless, President, we are get serious to run the country, to lead the country. And so the protests it's only there to make him to understand that you are doing all of the wrong things to dump this country into a very deep hole. Um, like I said previously, the president and his government have consistently refused to listen to the cry of the Liberian people. And again, we will be going into said the, the economic woes that we are going through is as a result of their ineptitude and their lack of knowledge in, in, in running government. We have said that they've acquired private properties at the expense of government, and this includes the president. We have said that they complain too much, they blame everything, they shifting blame on past government, and that should not be the case because they met a fairly stable economy. They repeated the same thing. We told them to sack Samuel Twe, Nathaniel Maguire, and all those inept people heading uh, 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 the, the economy management thing. They went and say total reshuffle. So they deserve no praise for that. And we are not here to to praise sing them. We are not here to listen to what they say because we've been saying it for for months and months and months. Well, let me just ask the last question. Yeah, one. How do you do the last question? Can uh, I, can I, we will give. Listen, we'll give one more chance. 
question to from him and uh yes, we'll, the, the next will be asking on a real okay, call back you can see some like very courses <coughs> yeah, here exactly. he has some explanation about that so uh, let's ask uh, that, that the last well question. my name is augustine otavius and i am from prom fm thank you very much from all education based on government warning it appears that the government will use force if <coughs> necessary to stop you the cop for demonstrating on december 30th how far are you prepared to go? Will you resist the force the government will use to display you? Question. My man will do that will get gone to resist force. And the government get gone, they they want to get all the power. But if this government is truly a responsible government, I am sure they will never ever see the thing in their widest imagination to use force against peaceful citizens. So, um, but you are in the press, you are journalists, you are hearing things. We are also hearing that they are training people to infiltrate them into protesters. We are not worried by that. We are not perturbed by that. The Liberian people are resolved that they will come out on the same hotel. And that's what we're going to do. Can I just squeeze my last question? Oh, uh, please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think we'll take only two more questions and uh, on Yaga Koba, hey, on Koba will be in the position to answer that question. So we'll take, we'll ask this gentleman to ask his question. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Zach Sherman <coughs> from KMTV. Um, I listened to the Minister of Information. Uh, he's talking about your <coughs> petition, June 7th specifically, it wasn't given to the, the government of Liberia, where on the day they expected the petition that wasn't given and you just read it where it wasn't given to them so a statement which tells that the government didn't receive your petition and now you are calling for the implementation of the petition how do you reconcile that the minister of information lied now if you say the petition was not given on june 7 does not equate to the petition was not given as a matter of information this petition was duly delivered to the Speaker of the House of Representatives on June 11. It was delivered to the President Pro Tem of the Liberian Senate on June 11. And it was delivered to the Executive Mansion, signed for on June 11. The sign on the copy that we gave them, and we have that in our icon. So, you know, Ministers of Information, normally they are noted for lying. And so the Minister of Information lied. <laughs> Yes. It's a question going to Yeke. Can I ask my question? If that question is not going to Yeke, I will not interrupt you. Is it going to Yeke? If it doesn't go to Yeke, I'm going to cancel it. Yes, the Yeke follow-up. We are seeing you holding a new library banknotes in the 100 and 500 denominations. What are you portraying? Well, we have said to the Liberian people on so many occasions that they, this government has printed money in the government and the money is in this country. And uh, now that you can see for yourself, the government told the Liberian people that there's no money in the country. I went to the bank this morning. I received uh, the alert from GT Bank that they have sent my 20% for August. In my account, I went to get some money from the bank and they gave me brand new money. So what we have been telling the Liberian people is true. You remember one time when uh, Honorable Malu said he saw pickup being loaded, not so? It is true. Our information is telling us that the former president gave CDC three pickups full of money. You remember one time when uh, the president, Bagubwe, Bishop, Pastor, we have said that he will pay wire school fees. <laughs> you remember that time, right? Okay, that the money he was trying to refer to that he will use the money to pay wire school fee. So our information is money was given to CDC by the past government, the system that were printed, and they have brought some of the money now. When you smell the money, you, you, you will know that it have not come from any vault. The money came from boxes that were brought in this country. From our information, the money was brought on Kenya Airways and brought into this country, and the money is here now. And the poor, the poor kept telling us, no money. No money, no money. But Bagubé printed additional money. We did not give me authority to print additional money. We gave me authority. What do you make of perceptions that uh, the opposition community or political leaders from key opposition political parties are financing the We Are Step Down campaign as evidenced 
by the Assistant Secretary General of this Unitive Party serving as acting chair of the COP. Yeah, but there's no party issue. Thank you. But I, 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 I'm right here, so why will you ask? Yeah. <laughs> there's no party issue. We're discussing the Lebron business. You understand what I'm saying? Look, you see why I say the government is very unserious? I'm, yeah, okay, I'm let me, let me address that question. Yeah, go ahead. I think that question should be addressed to me. Look, the political parties are not afraid of President We are. They are not afraid of the CDC. On June 7, when they decided that they were forming a part of the protest, they came out in a very elaborate press conference and said, we are supporting the, pro the, the, the protest. You understand that? Not coming out to say we are supporting the protest for June, uh, uh, December 30 does not mean that individual members of political parties cannot form a part. It does not mean that people who form executive, who are part of the executives of political parties cannot be part of the COP. The COP is a pressure group and it's a conglomeration of people from civil society, from political parties, he's from political parties, civil society, he's a member of the House of Representatives, he's a, he's a political leader of a political party. So we are a conglomeration of people from different backgrounds. So no political leader or party is giving the COP any specific support other than the fact that they said we respect the rights of our partisans to participate and freely assemble in anything that would be peaceful. Yeah, a quick one for representing the Colombia. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last question for this conference. <laughs> My name is Peter Moyiga. I work for Capital FM. Um, you are noted of making brief statements against the government. How reliable is your information as relates to you, the government printing new banknotes? Yeah, but the government told us there was no money in the country. Where we got the one from? From our living room? <laughs> When I got it from the bank, I came outside. I mean, outside the bank and stood in front of the bank and had my press conference. Can you tell us the source? What source? What kind of source? Money. I got new money from, from, the, bank. from the bank. So go and have the bank. How got the money? My man gave me some of the money. You forget it. <laughs> the money here, that FOC. You understand? I'm going to use the money to go all around. The government, the government have betrayed the trust and confidence that have been placed in them. 